just did it. Hello and welcome back to Real English with Real Teachers. In this live broadcast, we're going to be teaching you 10 posh expressions that we use in British English, but expressions that we actually use in day-to-day -day English. So you can use them with a really posh accent, like, oh, that was a spiffing match, wasn't it, Charlie? A spiffing match. Or you can say it in a nice, normal accent like me. That was spiffing, oh, absolutely spiffing. And people won't laugh at you. It's good. It's good language. Good posh language. Very good. And we have a spiffing sponsor. Lingoda has sponsored this video, but we will tell you about them later on. So uh, back to the vocabulary. Harry, what's the first one? What's the first one? So the first word we have today is, as you might have guessed, spiffing. And this means excellent, something that is really, really, really good. Um, so if you have a, a really fantastic English lesson with me, you could say, oh, I just had a spiffing lesson with Harry. Or I just watched a spiffing English lesson on real English with real teachers. Gosh, very good. And uh, yeah, just the idea of it. It's a, it's a frightfully spiffing idea to have a lesson with, um, with probably probably with me so yeah both are spiffing both teachers are spiffing aren't they they are we're, we're both frightfully spiffing teachers and i think using it with a, an adjective like oh, sorry an adverb like frightfully or terribly makes it sound even more posh doesn't it um so yes. that was that was frightfully spiffing you can really turn up the poshometer aren't you the poshometer very good yeah yeah you can um do you use it i i do um i'd say i probably use it in a bit of an ironic way in a little bit of a sarcastic way like if something wasn't um fantastic um like if i'm really disappointed about something like um maybe i have a date and my date texts me saying, oh, I'm busy tonight. I can't, I can't come. Sorry. I might say, oh, well, that's just spiffing. That's just spiffing, isn't it? Okay. So it would be oozing with sarcasm. Exactly. Like oozing, like completely drenched it. Like it's, it's really, really sarcastic. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And do they understand that you're upset or do they think, oh, he's pleased. That's strange. Do you not like me? I probably wouldn't say it to the person. <laughs> I wouldn't get the, te the, the let down text and then respond saying, oh, well, that's spiffing. I'll just stay in and, and uh, have a pot noodle then. You know, it's not, I'm not going to tell them that. I'd probably act like I'm not that disappointed just to kind of, yeah, play it off cool. Very good. Play it off cool, yeah, to, to be cool, to, to not look like you care. Very nice. And Very Emerson good. has a great one. What a, what a spiffing day to learn some good English with you guys. Oh, lovely stuff, Emerson. Thank you. So yeah, get your comments in, guys. Start using the vocabulary that we are giving you. That's the whole point of these live videos for you to interact with us and give us your examples. So the next one is to spiff up or spruce up. Spruce up. I feel like I, I prefer spruce up. So, Harry, kick it off with spiff up. Okay. So, to spiff something up is to make something look more attractive, to make it look nicer, um, or to make yourself look smarter. Um, so, if your, your flat needs a, needs a bit of a paint, like mine did a year ago, you could say, oh, I need to spiff up my flat. It's looking a bit dull. It's looking a bit boring. I need to modernize it. I need to spiff it up. Mm, okay. Well, it needs, uh, you could say a lick of paint. It needs a lick of paint. Like it has a, another layer of paint. That's it. Yeah, that's really good. It needs a lick of paint. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My toilet needs a lick of paint. My, well, my, my your bathroom. Your bathroom, okay. Yeah, Not yeah. Your toilet. toilet sounds straight. It sounds like I, I don't know, I was public toilet. It's got, poo stains. <laughs> it's got... <laughs> it's 
Yeah. Oh, that needs a lick of paint. Yeah, it needs it needs bleach, mate. That's what it needs. Um, yeah, a so... lick of a lick of bleach. <laughs> So yeah, there's another example. I, I spruced or spiffed myself up for my Tinder date. Oh, if you were lucky enough to get a match and you said the right things, you got on the, the Tinder date and uh, you wanted to look good. So you spruced yourself up. You um, so you might shave, you know, not, not necessarily. Beards are trending. Beards Ooh. are trending. So you might not shave, but you might put on a, an, a, a spray of after spray or cologne <laughs> after spray after, after shave. sorry yes after shave yeah you said that like we could edit this after you're like sorry <laughs> let's let's redo that take yeah, yeah but it's exactly. interesting because uh, when i talk to spanish students and they talk about that they they call it perfume they say oh, i when i go out when oh, i spruce myself up i wear perfume and I the always guys. think of perfume as, yeah, guys, they're men, yeah. Oh. And I always think perfume is like a fragrance that, that females use. And they were like, no, but aftershave, you only use it after you shave. Yes, I've actually had this debate with a Spanish person before. Yeah, it's confusing. Yeah. Just with a Spaniard. Just with a Spaniard. Um, there's a French word, eau de toilette. Eau de toilette. And that's actually, that's actually the spray. Sometimes you don't get it in the spray form, and then you have to say in the shops, have you got it in eau de toilette? Oh, that, that means spray, doesn't it? I thought it just means toilet smell. It, yeah, it does mean that, but <laughs> usually with a toilet device, it would be sprayed. It wouldn't be like poured on the toilet, would it? No, yeah, you would. Yeah, you'd spray it in the toilet. Yeah, yeah. but you spray it on yourself, don't you, to spray nice? You don't just spray it in the toilet. Like after you, you do can... a huge a huge poo, just spray it on the poo. So we should actually be calling it after poo. After yeah, make sure you put some after poo on. <laughs> I just did a massive turd. Uh, we've already got to toilet oh. talk. All right. So um, some examples. Oh, also, guys, let us know if we're talking absolute rubbish. Put us straight. Mm. Put us straight mean correct us. Correct us. Very good. We got a nice example here from okay. Helena. Um, I really need to spruce myself up because I have a first date with a guy. Mm. Ooh, very good. Yeah, get that after poo spray out, Helena. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get your after poo spray out. Uh, it sounds like you don't normally date guys, Helena, judging by this, con this comment. It's like, yeah, I have a first date with a guy. Is it usually mm. with a girl? Because otherwise you wouldn't have to point that out. But I, yeah, I wish true. you luck. I hope it goes well with, with this guy. Yeah, 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 very nice. Okay, thank you, Helena. So the next one is um, most with an adjective, meaning very, it's very. Um, like I was most displeased with the uh, curry that I had last night. It wasn't very tasty. It wasn't very tasty. I was oh, not right. happy. I was very unhappy with uh, the curry that I had. Or, as this example says, the pint of beer. I don't have a pint of beer here. I've just got a glass as a, as a prop. But, um, a prop. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you could, if you're unhappy with your beer, you could take it to the bar. And you could say, I was most displeased with this pint. Could you pour me another one, sir? <laughs> or, well, there's a problem there because you said was, meaning that you drank all of it and then you complained. <laughs> yeah, with an empty glass. So I am, I am most displeased with this pint. Please pour me another one. Yeah. That's true. That's true. But were you actually displeased with your curry? Is that, are the curries a bit rubbish in Australia? And I, no, it, it's, um, it's the curry that Stacey gave me last night. Um, oh. So, oh dear. no, no, I'm joking. I'm just using it as, a, as an example. It was, a, an it was example, a lovely yeah. curry. Chill out. Chill Stacey. out. Chill out, yeah. Stacey. Yeah. And then, and then you could say, <clears throat> I was most pleased with that curry, right? So you could yeah, use I it. Yeah, I should with, have said that. Yeah. And uh, you can use it with any kind of gradable adjective. Uh, you wouldn't say that was most excellent, would you? You'd say, like, that was most interesting yeah that was most most interesting that was, that that was, was most, most excellent 
No, it doesn't sound right, no, is it? Sounds a bit strange. What about so a lesson? We've added to a tweak a lesson. And so, sorry? Could you use it with a lesson? It was a most interesting, yeah, most interesting lesson. Mm -hmm. Most useful? It's a most useful lesson. Yeah. Useful so any lesson. adjective where you can say it was more or less. So that was more useful. <clears throat> mm -hmm. That was most useful. So it's like very, very useful. Um, the next one, old chap. And we have some variations of this. So this is a way to address a man. So you'd say it directly to a man. And it's a friendly way to address a guy. So if I see Charlie and I haven't seen him for a while, I could say, hey, how are you, old chap? How are you, oh, old chap? I'm, I'm good, thank you, you, you Harry, because I'm not going to copy you. It would be weird to, to reply with old sport, wouldn't it? Hey, old chap. Hey, old sport. That would be very <laughs> strange. It's awful, yeah. It is, it is strange, yeah. yeah. Don't copy. Don't copy. Yeah, be yourself, be yourself. And then we can also say old sport and old bean, old bean. And Charlie said, let's not include that. I've never, you know, no one uses that. And I said, my cousin does. He calls me old bean. He says, ah, how are you, old bean? And he's, he's not posh. He's from Essex, which is like, you know, yeah, no, he's a very typical Essex man. He doesn't, he's not posh at all. <laughs> Got to be careful what we're saying, Harry. I know. You're suggesting there's no posh people in Essex. It's and true. You, you, you're kind of correct. Yeah. And yeah, Joking. It, it, yeah, you can, yeah, it's probably where you can find least, the least posh people, isn't it? Like it's got the, yeah, the smallest population of posh people in the UK. <laughs> Possibly. Dangerous, dangerous conversation. So um, my dad would use sport. He would, he would, I've, I've heard him when he's driving, he might say, come on, old sport make your move like uh he might be mm. wanting somebody to pull out of the of the driveway or take overtake another car so uh he says come on old sport make your move or okay. move what does, he, what does he say if he if it's a woman holding up traffic because he can't say old sport to her come on old, come girl. On, old sporty spice move along <laughs> Very i'm good. not sure yeah. Okay. Oh, I think he's actually quite sexist with driving. So he might say, "Ah, oh, bloody women." <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine him being like that. I can imagine him being like that. Um, someone has said, um, "How have you been, my good old China?" Um, we can't say that, but we could move. We could take China out and just say, You're "My good sport." How have you, have you been, my good old sport? Right, mm. you could put good in front of it as well, can you? Have you been my good old, I would say friend, my good old friend. Good, good old, old friend, my good old buddy. My good old friend or buddy, yeah. yeah. Interesting example. It, yeah. it is an interesting example, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, the next one, what we got Charlie? Jolly good, that was jolly good, that was jolly bad, or jolly well. Oh, jolly well, yes. Mm. So it, it just, you know, modifies good or bad or well, but uh, makes it that, that little bit more posh. Yeah, it does, yeah. I, I'd normally, you'd normally use it in a positive sense. That was jolly good, jolly good. <clears throat> and we need to stress jolly when we're saying that. So that was, you can't say that was jolly good. That was jolly good. Actually, yeah, the meaning kind of changes, doesn't it? If I say that was jolly good and that was jolly good, the meaning slightly changes, doesn't it? It does. They sound, they sound um, correct, yeah? Hmm. Could you use it in a question? Was it good? Was it jolly good? Uh, no, it sounds, that sounds weird. It sounds no. really weird. Was it jolly bad? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really strange. No. Really strange. Mm -hmm. So, so if you it say was really um, it was it was jolly good, if you're stressing jolly, um, it sounds like it was a surprise. Well, that was jolly good, actually. Um, but then if you if you stress uh, good, then it's just really like emphasizing that it was really that was jolly. So if you're stressing jolly, then we're really emphasizing how amazing something was. That was jolly good. 
Mm, yeah. And a uh, posh hobby that people do is golf. So we can say that was a jolly good round of golf. Round being the, the, the game that day. A jolly good round of golf. There you go. Have you played a jolly good round of golf anytime recently? Uh, yes, I played. Uh, it wasn't such a jolly good round of golf, though. I played with my auntie in Australia a couple of months ago, but uh, we were a little bit stressed. We kept. Mm-hmm. Oh, she actually kept leaving her, her golf club behind. So uh-huh. we, we kept having to go back and apologise to the people. I said that she's got dementia. Sorry. And uh, they laughed. And then they said, don't do it again. <laughs> okay. She kept leaving her, her golf club where? Like, she'd just forget it and carry on walking to where the ball was? But to the next hole. So she would <laughs> leave the little chipper on the oh. side of the um, the green. And then she'd... F off to the next hole. <laughs> F off, um, which is short for the swear word. Fuck off. Um, but it means to to leave. Yeah. So I could say, when are you um, when are you effing off to the countryside? When are you effing off on holiday? When are you going on holiday? Yes. Yeah. Um, Charlie, your connection is a jolly shite. Uh, <laughs> So I wanted to ask, would you jump onto your uh, telephone Wi-Fi? I can do, yes. All right, well, I will be gone for a couple of moments, so uh, hold, the, hold the fort for me. And I shall. Teach that phrase. I shall. Right, I'll be back. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Charlie just said, um, hold down the fort hold down the fort so a fort is like a castle and if you say hold down the fort it means look after the fort take control for a while so i'm going please hold down the fort for a while hold down the fort so i'm going to do that um oh it's weird being on my own on a live broadcast um at least you're here to keep me company guys so the next one we have is This is a really good one, really, really good one. So if you had a a few too many pints, if you're a little bit drunk on a Saturday evening, um, maybe your mum calls you and you're slurring your words, you're slurring your words, um, meaning you're going, you can't really connect your words, you can't really speak properly, due to the the alcohol. And you say, oh, oh, mum, Sorry, I'm I'm absolutely blotto. I'm absolutely blotto. Blotto. It's a really, really nice sounding word. And it's incredibly posh. Incredibly posh. Um, so if you're very drunk, you can say you are blotto. So tell us in the comments, when was the last time you were blotto? I want to hear your examples. Um, another synonym for this, we have sozzled which I think is equally posh, absolutely sozzled. And I think the word absolutely is a really good way to intensify it and it can make it sound posh as well. I'm absolutely sozzled, Charlie. Absolutely. Oh, are you? Yeah. Sozzled this early because it's uh, the AM for you. I mean, I am trolleyed. Naturally. <sighs> But you know, it's uh, it's late in the evening for me. It's it's seven thirty, so it's beer o'clock. It's fine to be trolleyed at seven thirty p.m., but it's worrying to be sozzled at uh, eight thirty a.m. It is. Well, I've been up all night um, getting oh. blotto, so I, I wanted to be sufficiently blotto for this live broadcast. So I've yeah. been working on it all night. Brilliant. Um, and you said it's beer o'clock. This is good, isn't it? Beer o'clock. Beer o'clock. Time for beer. Time for beer. Time yeah. for beer. Yeah, yeah. And um, Ian has said, I had, I had a jolly good walk this morning. Very nice. Very good. nice. <laughs> I, I thought he said something. Yeah, when I quickly looked at that, <laughs> when I saw the word with a W. 
we week. won't go there. We won't go there. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Um, Emerson said that uh, hold down the fort was a jolly good phrase, wasn't it? I'm going to clap you because that's kind of clapping me. So uh, I, I'm going to enjoy this clap. <laughs> I think she meant the explanation. Good. The explanation of the phrase was, was oh, jolly good. For God's sake. Um, and then we got one from my student, Carlos. Hello, Carlos. How are you doing? The most mighty and most excellent lady, Queen Elizabeth II. <laughs> very, very good. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So it's using the most plus adjective structure there. Um, I think she's a most excellent queen. A most excellent queen. Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to take a pause for us right now. I'm going to tell you about the, the lovely sponsor, Lingoda. Um, we, we chose to take on this sponsor because they have an offer for language learners like yourself that is ridiculous. It's, um, it's, it's amazing that people are given this chance and we want to tell you about it. So it is three months of daily... It could be one lesson a day for three months online as a group lesson with their platform, Lingoda, with native teachers of English, Spanish, German or business English. And I feel like French, French, French as well. And they will give you the money back if you do all of those lessons. It's a huge motivator. They've done this offer before called the marathon, but now it's called the sprint and the super sprint and the half option or half sprint. Oh, no, sorry, the sprint. Yeah. So the super sprint is one lesson every day for three months. And then the sprint is half of that. So it's 15 lessons a month. And this all starts in January through till April. But the sign up the last day that you can sign up to this is December the 19th. So we really recommend you should think about this. It's a big opportunity for you to take on, you know, to, to get your English to that next level. If you feel like you're plateauing with your language, you want to boost it, then yeah, consider that. And the link is in the description box below. Harry did it himself and we, we think it's a good one. Yeah, yeah, I, I did this in Spanish and... Um... It's a brilliant way to, to build confidence when speaking, because imagine if you're speaking the language every single day uh, with other speakers of the language. Um, they're group lessons, normally quite small, like two to four um, students in a class. So you're getting that confidence of not only speaking to a native speaker, the teacher, but also to other, to other students who sometimes have a better level than you, sometimes have a you know, worse level, a lower level than you. So it's great experience to become comfortable speaking a language. So hope uh, you guys enjoy that. And uh, yeah, sign up before the deadline. Spaces are limited. So do it uh, as soon as possible. There we go. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Back to uh, real English with real teachers. And the next phrase, I don't think you've done this yet, um, is to guffaw with laughter. Now, I actually used this one and Harry hadn't heard it really until I said it and he thought it was ridiculous. But I love it. My family uses it. Um, and it just means to to laugh a lot. Uh, I think it's also like for a short period of time, quite loudly. But I just use it generally like I was I was laughing a lot. So oh, it'd, we be, it'd be it would be like boring. <laughs> that would be yeah. a guffaw, right? Yeah. Oh, he was guffawing with laughter. He guffawed with laughter. Mm -hmm. There you go. OK, so um, tell us, guys, have you guffawed with laughter? Do you ever guffaw with laughter when you're watching our videos? Um, oh. Some people have told me that they, they watch our videos when they're on the bus and they find themselves guffawing with laughter while they're uh, going to work, which is a nice, uh, nice thought. I like the thought of that. It is, yeah. I suppose it's better than them on the toilet. Yeah. It is, yeah. I don't want to imagine them on the toilet. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm happy with people guffawing with laughter whilst on the toilet. At least they're in a safe uh, place, 
in case they guffaw so loud, so loud that they evacuate their bowels. <laughs> it is it is funny to think that people might be watching this whilst they are doing that. Though. Lovely. Anyway, it is. and it's probably more likely now because they're what you know we're broadcasting on Facebook as well. So there's more chance of people watching it while they're on the toilet. So we've got an example here. Um, she was guffawing with laughter when the Queen let off <laughs> during her speech. Uh, let off means to fart. <laughs> that is to let off. So Can't good phrase of verb. And Charlie's do. happy we put that one in. Can see yeah, it. very happy. Yeah, yeah. Like okay. It. So um, that, was, that was rather rude. That was rather rude, or that was um, terribly indecent of you. Could I mm. say that? Terribly indecent, yeah, or terribly inappropriate. Terribly inappropriate. Yes, that was terribly inappropriate of you to put that example on there. Mm. I'd like you to apologise, but uh, I see that we have uh, the next example is uh, still relevant to toilet talk. Lou or Lavi which is, uh, yeah, just a, a posher way of saying toilet or bathroom. I want to go to the loo, I want to go to the lavvy. It but is, I, yeah. I can see that Harry wants to go back to terribly and rather and give some more examples. So let's do that. <laughs> I just want to say that well, if it's not obvious to you already, it means very. Um, so rather, in like American English, if you said rather, it would probably just mean like quite, a, a bit. But for us, it's like, it's very, isn't it? You know, that was rather good. You know, that was very good. Um, yeah. And terribly is slightly more than rather. It's like a bit more, yeah, a bit more than very, basically. Like, oh, that was terribly good. You know, it couldn't really get much, much better. And then mm. we had the example, terribly inappropriate. So that was mm. terribly inappropriate to say the queen let off. You know, you should never say these things about the queen. Mm. And where would you, could you talk about um, someone that you find attractive with, with these two definitely. rather and terribly? You definitely could. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure lots of people find you uh, terribly attractive, Charlie. <laughs> okay. So she, she or he was rather attractive or terribly attractive. Yeah. There you she go. Was rather sexy. Okay. Mm. Good. Go. Good. Yeah, English of Lucy. Well, Lucy from English of Lucy is rather attractive. She's terribly attractive, in fact. Okay. We have an infatuated man. Mm. Mm. Nah, she's she's getting married. I'm not. Yeah. I don't. I don't go after married women. <laughs> she probably style. uses the word lavy. Actually, I can imagine Lucy maybe saying lavy. I can imagine her mother using the word lavy. That's true. Yeah. Does your mum use the word lavy? When no, she tells you she she's going bog. to Twitter. <laughs> yeah, okay. Bog. bog. Toilet. Bog is a yeah, toilet, but um, it's ruder or it's more yeah. slang, more informal. Yeah, it's vulgar. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to the bog. She wouldn't be very happy hearing that I am suggesting she says bog. So uh, she would not be this, would she? She wouldn't be chuffed. <laughs> The bits absolutely not <clears throat> she would be appalled actually she would be appalled um, which is another quite a, a posh sounding word isn't it appalled appalled mm, yeah good one. um so if you're <clears throat> i wrote it wrong uh so if you uh are really unhappy about something you're very displeased you can say i was absolutely appalled to hear that charlie said that i say bog that's what his mother would say. Appalled. I was very upset. Yeah. Okay. Um, so chuffed a bit. Should we focus chuffed on that? Bit. Yeah. So very, very pleased. Very happy. Um, have you been chuffed to bits with anything recently, Charlie? Anything well, in your I, life? I was actually chuffed to bits with the fact that I uh, managed to do all of the things today that I was required to do. I had a long to do list. I had lots of things to do and I, I succeeded. So I was chuffed to bits um, before starting this. I'm still chuffed, obviously. This hasn't, this hasn't brought my mood down. 
I'm happy to be here, but I was <laughs> chuffed to bits before this lesson. Yeah, exactly. Okay, good. Yeah, you should feel chuffed to bits. You've, you've accomplished all your tasks for the day. You've ticked them off on the yeah. Sana app. Which is yeah. The, uh, yeah. It's, it's all the good reason to be, to be chuffed. Absolutely. Um, someone's written a really good example. Uh, Dahlia said, it's terribly inappropriate to let off in public. Go to the lavvy. I'd say go to the lavvy. That's a very good example. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't fart in public. Go to the toilet. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And um, Harry, who haven't you seen in Yonks? Hmm. Who haven't you seen in Yonks? Okay. So Yonks years. Yeah. A long time. Yonks. Uh, I haven't seen. Um, mm, I haven't watched an episode of, of Friends in Yonks. I know that's not ah. quite answering your question, no. uh, but you could say I haven't seen Rachel from Friends in Yonks, for example. Yeah, but that is interesting linguistically. Um, it would mean that he hasn't met her, like he hasn't spoken or seen her face to face, really. Mm. I haven't seen Rachel from Friends. Um, how could you say it? On the TV. Yeah. In Yonks. Yeah. yeah. So sometimes we use this and it's not, um, it's not necessarily meaning years, right? Like if you haven't seen someone for a really long time or like, like I haven't seen you in Yonks, like in, in the flesh because you moved to Australia. So I could say, oh, I haven't been with you in Yonks. This is yeah. so nice to have a barbecue in Australia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. We don't literally mean years. We just exaggerate with this word and we mean a long time. And, and it's showing that you have missed them, I suppose, as well, because it's, it's saying that it, it feels like a long time. It, yeah. it, it wouldn't be used with someone that you don't really care about, would it? No. Unless you're lying. Unless you're just British. Like, <clears throat> if you bump into someone from school who you never really liked... You might say, oh, I haven't seen you in Yonks. And you're like, I wish I wasn't here right now, but I am. So whatever. Yeah. I'll yeah, be nice. True. I'll be civil while I'm here. Very good. To be civil, to be nice, to be polite, to be civil. Yeah. Mm. To be civil. Yeah, absolutely. And do, do you use this one, Yonks? Do you, do you say that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. I kind of use it sarcastically. Yeah. But yeah, I use it. I haven't seen you in yeah. Yonks. Yeah. Yeah, good. Do you? I do. Yeah, I haven't seen Yonks. Yeah, I don't think I always use sarcastically either. Yeah, so it's got the real English stamp of approval, as, as do all the other ones. They're, they're, they're all good. They're all good. Lots of stamping going on today. Yeah, it's like we're working in the post office. It's just pure <laughs> stamping all day. Um, yeah. All right, Charlie, uh, what about the next one? What we got? I think, I think it's the last one, isn't it? Um, I don't think you've scrolled down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, no, I have, but the other ones we have in our list are the new ones. Oh, today. I stand corrected. <laughs> yes, I stand I corrected. I, <laughs> I, am, I am wrong. He was right. Yeah. He was right. I'm yeah. appalled by your comment that I hadn't scrolled down. Yeah, yeah. I apologise. I, yeah. I can only, I can only apologise, Harry. Mm. Okay. Um, well, this one, it's, um, it's a polite swear word, I would say. It is. Yeah. 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 Take it away, because I can hear an echo. Okay. So, um, yeah, it, it does mean. It's, it's similar to the F word. So um, any times where you can use the S, F, the F word, not the S, um, you can substitute it with bugger, bugger. Um, so if you're really annoyed about something uh, or disappointed, you can say, oh, bugger, oh, bugger. Uh, and I think we've got, we've got a good example coming up um, about mustard. Um, so if you spill mustard on your 
your white jeans, if you're wearing white jeans or, or even just black jeans, mustard shows up on any color. It's the bad thing about mustard. You could say, oh, bugger, I spilt some mustard on my blazer. I just realized I was talking about jeans, your blazer, <laughs> your jacket. Very good, yeah. Oh, bugger, we've done a little, um, a little I, not a capital I. <laughs> And I've actually noticed that that is uh, a common occurrence. With with who? Just, uh, just us. Just us, yeah. Really? We always have a baby eye. A baby eye, really? We're bringing yeah. back the baby eye. Yeah, it looks so It looks so wrong, doesn't it? Baby eye. There we go again, the old one. I haven't seen you in Yonks. Where's the capital I? <laughs> and I was being polite. But I think it's you. Okay, right, okay. <laughs> oh. All right, well, I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate your honesty. I'll, I'll watch out for baby eyes in future. Baby eyes. But there we go. So, um, yeah, I think, I think those are all the phrases. Uh, thank you very much for the comments, guys. Have you got any more that you'd like to show? I've got one. Another one from Ian. Haven't seen you guys uh, live in yonks i wouldn't say jolly yonks would you jolly say yonks. jolly yonks i haven't seen, no no don't yonks. don't yonks is already exaggerating yeah. the years isn't it so you don't need yeah. to say jolly yeah yeah it'd be like saying very ages it yeah doesn't work no it doesn't no 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 yeah but, uh, really good appreciate it ian thank you yeah uh, I've got an interesting question from someone with a Russian name, which I don't know how to read. Uh, thanks for the comment, person. Is there an intrusive R in guffawing? Yes, there is. So we don't pronounce the W like a W. We wouldn't say guffawing. We pronounce it like an R. Guffawing. Guffawing. Ring. Mm. Guffawing. Yeah, very good question. Great nice question. one. So... Um, that's all well, I've lost Charlie. I don't know if you've lost me or I've lost you. So I, lo I lost you for a second. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll just repeat. Just repeat. Guys, we'd love some more comments down below about uh, these phrases and using them in, in context. And then we'll be giving you a thumbs up if they are correct, or perhaps correcting them if they are not. But uh, we hope you enjoyed them. And uh, yeah, stay posh. Keep it posh, guys. Thank you for your time. <laughs>